Why did nobody tell me about the magicians? Cue the intro. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fandoms Anonymous. I am here to review The Magicians Season 1. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, that already, that season already came out. That's old. No, it's new to me. I decided to pick it up on Netflix. I looked at it. I looked at the trailer. I said, let's go ahead and watch it. And oh my God, was I brought into a world that I never knew that I would be taken to. I have already been Season 1 and Season 2. And I know Season 3 is coming out on Sci-Fi like next week but excuse me and my notes about this show they're going to be a little bit of everywhere this show takes you a little bit of everywhere so let's go ahead and get into it right quick magic comes off as real instead of fantastical like your Harry Potter and your Narnia it comes off as this is just part of everyday society for people who are magicians and know about magic it just comes off as if it's a part of everyday life all right. Another thing, it, magic is more mathematical and like charts and graphs and formulas rather than just turn your wand this way, read this incantation that way. It, it's more of it's it's really like it's 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 like math in a sense. It's it's more realistic. Like if this was the reality of our life right now, we would be walking around with little notebooks with hieroglyphics and and formulas and figures and everything to create spells like they actually create some spells on this show and there are some spells that are already written out but for me, it, it it's it's so real it's so real okay no wands it's all done by hands and the incantations from different languages like for some spells that you want to do you have to know how to speak a little bit of that language you do and they have the school called break bills and of course you know break bills the first thing you think about is hogwarts so break bills is a school that they go to to learn more about magic and learn more about their abilities and learn who they are as magicians not wizards magicians okay so you know it, it's it's more hand like you know you'll see them go you know turn turn their hands upside down and putting hands together and stuff like this and they are literally casting spells and they call it casting you know that's, that's what they call it casting spell they call it casting all right each position has a class type you know you have your physical magicians your knowledge magicians you even have a special group of people called travelers like penny penny is a traveler so again there's a school that break bills it reminds you of hogwarts and you're able to get in and out of it from the real world. You don't have to travel through a secret platform or through anything else of that nature. You literally, if you are a part of that school, you travel in. We start off with Quentin and Julia. Quentin is going to uh, have a, a meeting for his uh, spot at Yale. In turn, he comes into some pretty splendiferous type of situation where he winds up at break bills. He winds up taking a test to seeing if he's going to be good to stay there as well as Julia. Julia fails and she's removed from break bills. But Julia knows that she's knows that she's a magician and Quentin knows that he's he did not know that he had or possessed magic. This show really takes you into the reality of an adult Harry Potter. It takes you into reality of magic being real, magic being a part of everyday life in a sense and just magic mean magic and I love what they do with this show now we have this specific place called Fillory now Fillory is a fantastical world that's created in the book so it's almost like they have a Harry Potter book inside of this TV show so Fillory is actually a real place and Quentin has been reading the books about Fillory just as in our lives we were reading the Harry Potter books. He's been reading these books forever, and, you know, all growing up and even as an adult and he always went to go to Fillory. But we found out that Fillory is a real place. Um, we also have, there's also witches. It's like, the thing about spells sometimes they're hard to come by if you're not going to break bills and learning spells and you're just out in the real world like everyday life spells are sometimes hard to come by so you literally have people who are turning tricks for spells selling stuff for spells 
uh, joining different groups and cults. You have a group of people called the Hedges. They're basically hedge witches. They do spells. Uh, they do evil stuff. They do good stuff. You know, they're kind of in between. And it goes along a lot of the premise where they want magic to be able to do magic in order to fix certain things. Um, we got a, a vast amount of characters. I'm going to go off some of the main cast and characters. We got Quentin. Quentin is one of the best people I have seen be portrayed on television. This man is complex. He, he has a deep emotional complex. He is deeply scarred by some things in life. He wants to be accepted. Then again, he don't want to be. He don't want to be accepted. It's like he's just moving on throughout life, just just very misunderstood. And now that he's a part of this whole magical realm, he feels like he's understood. We got Julia, of course, that's Quentin's best friend, been his best friend for a long time. We go through and see what she goes through after she was dropped out of break bills because she didn't pass the tests. And she turns into one of those people who has to do magic. She knows that magic is real. Before her memory is wiped, she puts a cut in her arm. Because if you don't pass a test, they wipe your memory. You never know what happened. But she puts a cut in her arm before they do it. So that she'll be able to see that cut. And that cut will remind her of what, of why she got that cut in the first place. That it was from something, from break bills. And it was something as far as magic is concerned. So she becomes someone who knows about magic. And she becomes part of this little hedge. Which click that goes around and, and looking for spells and you know working together to get different spells and stuff like that we got margo and elliot they come as a pair uh elliot he's homosexual he's kind of bisexual in a sense and you got margo uh best friend margo is h-o-t hot uh they kind of are like the the cool kids at break bills they're real popular They've been there for a while. They know what they're doing. Uh, you got Penny. Penny is like the butthole. He's a real asshole. Uh, but he's what you call a traveler. He can, you know, teleport himself to different places, different dimensions, you know, as he gets more and more powerful. We got Katie. Her and, and Penny hooked up literally real quick. I've never seen sex levitating in the air. That's something that's amazing. They hooked up real quick. And they got to know each other. She's kind of on the outside of herself. So that's why they, those two kind of connect real good. We got Alice. Oh my God. I love me some Alice. Alice is just so hot. H-O-T hot. And, we, um, and she's she's real. She's the bookworm. You might as well call her, her Hermione. But she's real conflicted. She had a conflicted childhood growing up. And her parents also went to break bills. Her brother went to break bills. Her brother actually died trying to help and save someone. And one of her missions is to, even though she knows everything she needs to know about magic, one of her missions is to come to break bills and try to find some way to bring her brother back. We got Dean Fogg. Dean Fogg is the dean. He's the head of the school and very great complex characters. Some bad things that happen to him. Uh, we got the chat ones, which are actually real people from the books, from uh, the Fillory books that they soon find out are real people. Uh, and we also have the Beast, which we find out to be Martin Chapman, one of the Chapman uh, children who, you know, wanted to go to Fillory and be all a part of Fillory. And he ended up becoming evil and drinking from the wellspring, which gives them magic or, uh, you know, gives them their magic. That's what the wellspring does. Um, we, it's just there's just so much involved in this show that you could just literally talk about it all day long like i wrote i wrote so many notes uh, about the magicians it, it it compels me in a certain way that you take all of these characters and that you put them into this show and you give everybody their own thing to do there is never a time where one person is always doing the same thing as another person on this show even though they might be in the same room and going to the same place or getting ready to do the same thing at the end of the day they both those two people still have their own individual things going on I mean, you would think something like that would not be able to be placed on tv but they do it so well they do it so well you know even though Ellie and Alice are together, they both have their own things going on in their mind and in their lives. Same thing with Ellie and Margot. They're thick as these, but they both have their own conflictions. Penny and Katie, they both have their own conflictions personally. Um, the big bad of this season was the Beast. He was Martin Chatwin. He was very powerful. He had sipped from the wellspring and was draining the wellspring, which gave the powers. He was going in and out of Fillory. He ended up making Dean fall blind because he knew he was a powerful magician at the school. Uh, again, we found Quentin found out that Philip was real. Um, 
they go to Fillory and they actually end up becoming High Kings of Queens of Fillory. Elliot, Margot, Penny, not Penny, but uh, Elliot, Margot, Quentin, and Alice became High Kings and Queens of, of uh, Fillory. Uh, Alice ended up killing the beast after she became very powerful by drinking from the semen of Ember, <laughs> who is a god. If there are gods in this show as well, uh, it, it's like Quentin always wanted to go to filler. He didn't know it was real, and then he finds out it's real. And, and it puts me along the lines if I found out that Hogwarts was real, if I took a trip to London and got on the wrong train, and next thing I know, we're at Hogwarts Castle. Like, how epic would that be? Uh, at the end of this season, uh, Elliot ends up staying in Fillory as a king because of a bargain that was made. Uh, the bargain, I can't remember, the bargain was that uh, if Elliot, okay, if Elliot stayed and, and married a girl in Fillory, became, he became king and she, she became his wife, then the knife maker would make a knife so that they could kill the beast with. Uh, and of course the beast was Martin Chatwin so he became this king of Fillory and he went on in that direction it's like everybody gets their own story it's so epic that everybody gets their own story oh man oh man 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 it's just it's just so awesome it, it, there's no other way to explain it I could go on and on and on again but I tell you guys please go watch the magician season one and season two on netflix i will do a season two review at a later time maybe later on this week but i just absolutely love the magicians if you've already watched the magician season one let me know in the comments below how you feel about it we'll be watching this on youtube or facebook let's talk about it let's talk about it. let's talk about this epic and amazing show we'll see you guys in another video